Good evening, everybody. Good evening, David. Good to see you all tonight. Good to be back in the house of the Lord again, isn't it? Just to Amen. praise and worship together and to come around his, table, uh, to come around his work together as well. Um, there's nowhere else we'd rather be tonight than here in his house, so just thank and praise him that we're found here this evening. Um, we'll be praying a wee bit later on anyway for, uh, for the sake of the assembly and for our upcoming services, but we'll open up with a wee word of prayer now, and then I'll just go through the announcements for the coming week. Bless the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, once again, Lord, that we are found here tonight, Lord, another opportunity for us to gather together, Lord, just to, to have a time of fellowship, Lord, and to gather around your word, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, again, Lord, for bringing each of us here, for everything that you do for each and every single one of us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are tonight, Lord, the King of all kings, Lord, and the Lord of all lords, Amen. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing that you surround each of us with, Lord. And Lord, we know that there's others who would love to be with us this evening, Lord. But Lord, you know each and every circumstance, Lord. And Lord, you know why they haven't been able to make it out tonight, Lord. But Lord, we would be praying for these people, Lord, a little bit later on, Lord. And Lord, there's, there's nothing that you cannot do, Lord. You're the great physician tonight. And we thank you and we praise you for that, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that you just place your capable healing hand upon them, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, that you bring them back to full health and strength. Our prayer is, Lord, that we would see them amongst us again here this coming Sunday, Lord, where we can praise and worship along with them, Lord. Lord, so just be with each and every one of them, Lord. Lord, as we turn to your word in just a few moments, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that it would encourage somebody this evening, Lord. And Lord, that you bless speaker and listener alike. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, just to, to go through the, the rest of the week. Um, well, first of all, this is our last midweek meeting of this year. Um, so they won't resume until January. Um, so uh, just keep that. Next week's the Lighthouse Kids Christmas Party. And then the week after that, there's a, a leadership night. So this is the last uh, of the Tuesday evenings of this year. Um, also, don't forget tomorrow morning, uh, Mums and Tots from 10 to 12. And then on Friday evening, Thrive from 7 to 9. And then our Lord's Day meetings as well on Sunday. So just keep all those services as in your prayers. As I always say, um, that we'll see somebody come to know the Lord as Amen. their saviour this Amen. week. And we'll be mindful to give him the glory. Um, if you have your Bible with you, I'm not going to be very long tonight. Just to give us plenty of time to, to pray. Um, but if you have your Bible, turn with me to Luke's Gospel. And chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. And we're going to read verses 40 to 48. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians, and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Amen. And know that the Lord will add a blessing to the reading of his word this evening. Now this will be a passage that all of us here are very familiar with that we will have read many, many times before. And it shows us the amazing power of the Lord. And it shows us that every disease can be healed by him. 
I know on Saturday afternoon, Janine and I and the kids, we were we went into town and the place was just crazy on Saturday. And even though it's still three weeks to Christmas, we know that it's only going to get worse over the next couple of weeks. But the crowds in town were just mad and there was people pushing past each other, trying to get to where they wanted to be, pushing their way through to try and get the, a gift for somebody for Christmas. And we got to the point where we just had enough when we needed to go for a coffee. But you know, the crowds in the Bedlam on Saturday reminded me of this portion of scripture that we have just read. You know, in time the crowds were there because they were going for Christmas presents. But in our reading that we've read this evening, the crowds were there that day because they wanted to see Jesus. You know, the amazing things Jesus was saying and doing would have spread like wildfire and there would have been curiosity among the people they wanted to see him they wanted to witness him they wanted to witness the things that he was doing so that they could make their mind up for themselves many people would have also went to try and get healed by him and it tells us in our reading that the woman had been sick for a long period of time she had been bleeding for 12 years She'd spent all of her money on physicians and doctors, but nobody had been able to help her. Nobody could cure her condition. And 12 years is a very long time, and I'm sure at times this woman felt like giving up. I'm sure at times she was extremely discouraged. She would have been worried and anxious about her situation. She had tried the doctors, she tried the physicians, but the problem continued. But then she came to the great physician and he was able to do what others couldn't. You know, church, no matter what we're going through, the Lord is able. He can do more than any doctor or more than any hospital. He can do more than even the most advanced medical treatments. And this woman realized this and thought to herself, if only I could touch the hem of his garment. What amazing faith this lady had. She wasn't expecting a meeting with Jesus or an interaction with him. She knew that all she had to do was touch him and that that would be enough. But she wasn't the only one there that day and she found herself having to push through the crowd. She was determined to touch the Lord Jesus and she wasn't allowing any obstacles to get in her way. You know, church, many times we bring our prayer requests before the Lord and we pray about many things. We pray about our own health. We pray about the health of our family and friends. We pray about our finances and our unsaved loved ones and so on. And just like the woman in our reading, we can find ourselves praying for these things over and over again, even for many years. Whenever we read of the same event in Mark's Gospel, it tells us that the woman wasn't getting any better, but instead was actually getting worse. And we can feel that way too at times. The more we pray, the longer it seems to go on, the worse things seem to get. But churches, we continue in prayer about those things, just like the woman, we too can push through. Amen. And we know that just one touch from the Lord is enough to see our prayers answered. You know, whenever I was a young boy, I used to hate crowds, I hated large crowds, and I would have almost panicked if I found myself in amongst a large crowd of people. And back then in the late 80s, the big cartoon at the time was the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Can we remember that or not? But you remember the big store in town, the big, to uh, big toy store in town, Leisure World? I remember we were just coming up to Christmas and at that time the turtles was the big thing. That was the big craze and everybody wanted turtle toys for Christmas and they were like hen's teeth, couldn't get them anywhere. And I remember one Saturday I was in town with my mum and Leisure World had a, a notice on the window saying that they would be getting turtles toys in the following weekend and that they would be opening early. And the following weekend, my mum and my sister and myself, we went down about six o'clock in the morning and queued outside Leisure World. 
and then eventually they let us all in and there was a mad scramble to get to these toys because they were all the craze and everybody wanted to get them for Christmas. There was a stampede to get to these figures. And I remember mum and my sister Rhonda pushing their way through the crowd to try and get some of these toys for me. And of course I was standing away panicking because again of the huge crowds and mum and Rhonda were in amongst it all. But it turned out that they managed to get a few of those toys for me. And you know, if we hadn't have went to the shop that day, we wouldn't have got them. If Mum and Rhonda hadn't have pushed through, we wouldn't have got them. And I often wonder what would have happened to the woman in our reading if she hadn't have pushed through the crowd that day. But she was determined, she was persistent in getting through the crowd in order to touch Jesus and receive the healing that she had long hoped for. And whenever we turn to the Lord about our situation, we too can be determined and persistent in our prayers to him. It says in James chapter 5 verse 16, that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You know, the Lord Jesus told this parable about the persistent widow in Luke 18 verses 2 to 8. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry day and night to him? Though he bears along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Now it tells us in the beginning of Luke chapter 18 that the Lord Jesus told that particular parable so that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. And again, we can indeed lose heart when we prayed about something for so long and the answer doesn't seem to come. But we shouldn't lose heart knowing that the Lord is in control and we can push through and see those prayers answered. We can indeed continue to bring persistent prayers to him. In our main reading we read of how the Lord Jesus knew that this woman had touched him. Even though there was such a huge crowd pushing up against him, he still felt this individual touch. It was, as, it was as if it was just this woman and Jesus. And you know, as I have said many times before, isn't it wonderful just how personal the Lord Jesus can be? Amen. You know, there was a huge crowd that day trying to get the Lord's attention. And it's the same with us whenever we go to him in prayer. A large number of people all over the world praying about their own things at exactly the same time as we are. And yet he hears every single word of our prayers. He gives us his full attention as if it was just us and the Lord. And even whenever our prayers are pers persistent and repetitive, he never gets tired of hearing our voice. That's right. You know, what a wonderful thought that is this evening. We read in the final couple of verses of our reading that the woman was healed instantly. And the Lord says to her in verse 48, Be of good cheer, your faith has made you well. This woman had been healed from her affliction that had bothered her for so many years. Her persistence and her perseverance had paid off. She pushed through and she was healed. Finally set free from this terrible situation. And as I said at the start, no matter what our situation is, the Lord is able. When we ask for his healing touch, either for ourselves or for our family and friends, he can indeed heal and bring us back to full health and strength. We can indeed receive that healing and come through the other side. He can touch us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Amen. When we ask the Lord to save our family and our unsaved loved ones, again, we know that he is able. Even those people who seem furthest 
away from the Lord, those people who have no time for him at the moment. We can see the names of those people written in the Lamb's Book of Life. No matter how hard a heart they would have, no matter how little time they would have for the Lord, we can see these people saved. We can see the lost of this area won for Jesus. The kids in Lighthouse, the teenagers in Thrive, the parents and mums and tots, we can see these people saved. Yes, the Lord is able. It tells us in God's word that the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we often read through our Bibles and we read of all the amazing things that the Lord did. And sometimes we find ourselves wondering if the Lord still does these things today. But we can be certain and thankful and reassured that the Lord does indeed still do these things today. Amen. He is still in the healing business today. Psalm 103 verses 2 and 3 says... Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. He is still in the saving business today. It says in Isaiah 59, verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, but it cannot save. Yeah. He is still in the providing business today. It says in Psalm 37, verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Amen. Again, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's forever our healer. He's forever our saviour. Mm. And he's forever our provider. No matter what our situation is, the Lord can bring us through. Again, he is able. So just as I bring this short word to a close before we come to a time of prayer, you know what a wonderful God we serve tonight. Amen. A God who can do all things. There's absolutely nothing too difficult for him. In our reading we read of a woman who had a terrible illness, a woman who had suffered with this illness for many years. She had spent lots of time and money trying to get a cure for her issue, but nothing worked. She at times would have felt that she was going to have to deal with this certain situation for the rest of her life. That she would never be cured from it. That she would have felt many times that she didn't know what to do. Probably thought many times that she didn't know which way to turn. But one day she realized that she could turn to Jesus. She is persistent. She is determined. And she's not giving up. And she pushes her way through and touches the garment of Jesus. As a result of this faith, she is instantly healed. Yeah. The Lord Jesus was able to do what others had failed to do. The Lord Jesus made a way when there didn't seem to be a way. He freed this woman from her affliction, even though at times she would have felt that she was always going to be bound by it. She was fully and completely healed. No church, we can have that reassurance tonight that we too can turn to the Lord. No matter what our situation is, we can bring it to him. Hallelujah. And again, even if it's repetitive, even if it's persistent, he never gets tired of hearing our voice. Mm. He gives us his full attention every single time that we turn to him, as if we have him all to ourselves, and it is just us alone with the Lord. And yes, there will indeed be times whenever we feel discouraged and disheartened. We will have times whenever we feel as if our prayers are just hitting the ceiling. There will be times whenever we wonder if the Lord is really hearing. There will be times whenever we wonder if he's ever going to answer our prayers. We will wonder at times what the Lord is doing and if he even knows what he is doing. But church, just like the woman in our main reading, all we have to do tonight is push through. Yes. And we know that the Lord is able this evening. We hope you're encouraged by this short word. Okay, we're going to have a time of prayer now. I'll hand over to Pastor in a minute just to go through our, uh, our prayer request. You know, but if anybody wants prayed for tonight, Pastor and myself and Barry are here. Just let us know. And there's no problem. We'll be more than happy to pray for you. Again, the Lord is able. 
Uh, we're coming to the great physician this evening. And again, he can do all things. Bless you. Praise the Lord.